He's an on time God. Yes, he, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Oh, he may not come when you want it, but he'll be there right on time. He's an on time God. Oh, yes, he is. If you wear a choir robe, you better sing. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. Let me hear. Oh, on time. Hey. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. But he'll be there right on time. He is an on time. Hey. Oh, yes, he is. Can I get a witness? He's an on time. Unless you've been waiting. But he'll be there in the nick of time. Oh, I remember the time when I was not well. The doctor said, I don't know what's wrong with you. I said, Help me. He said, I cannot. I've done it. to the right I did everything I knew to do with all of my might that he came to me in a flash of fire lifted me up set me on higher healed my body and now I can tell I ain't worried I'll send my sickness right back to hell he's an on time God yes he is oh It may not come, oh, but he'll be there. Yes, he will. Oh, yeah. Now play it like you mean it. Oh.
don't you hesitate. Jump on in. The water is fine. This is what you've been needing for your peace of mind. What's wrong with you? My God can fix. Ah, he knows, and he ain't playing with sticks. <laughs> he came to set you free from way. Ah, don't you know you are his star? He's an all time God. Yes, he is. Come when you want him, let him be there. Hey, he's an old time. Hey, oh yeah, yeah. I don't know what y'all waiting for. I'm not no miracle in a bottle. <laughs> All you need to do is get a little loose. You people are too used to watching. <laughs> ah! While you're watching, and you're waiting, and you're worrying, contemplating. Some of us are taking a little trip while we're dancing. Gonna let our back hip slip. We're moving to the sound of distant thunder. Girl, you better be careful. You're gonna wonder. All of us are making the change from griping, complaining, and murmuring. If you want to, to fix what's up with you, let me tell you, you got to do what they do. Get in the water. Get wet. Get what you need. Something you won't forget. You ain't going to buy no video and get it in your living room. I came to tell you what you're seeing is what's going on in the womb. We're getting ready to leave this place. So we're moving to the cleft in the rock to see his face. Ah, uh, don't watch me. Don't wait. You better get in the water before it's too late. Uh, some of you need to dance while you got the chance. Some of you need to shout. You don't know what living's all about. You're afraid you'll mess up your hair. I hate to do this, but I really don't care. You so well that you're not going to look fine. You don't know about this God of mine. He don't give a rip about your hair. He don't give a rip about what you wear. He wants to know what you're going to do when Jesus comes down to make love with you. You're going to push him away or lead him in the dark to a place where he can have his way in your heart. Come on. Deeper yet, you need some of this. You won't forget. Get in the aisle before it's too late. Jesus is coming. Don't you hesitate. Take the hand of a hand of a friend. This may be our last chance before the end to give him praise for what he's done. I'm talking about Jesus. Our God is one. <laughs> Get in the aisle. Get what you came for. He's given you the way. Walk on through the door. Close your eyes and don't wait. This is what you've been waiting for. Don't hesitate. He's on time, God. Yes, he is. Ah, some of y'all gonna be green with envy. We're doing what you dream about. Ah, oh, come on, girl. Come on, girl. Get fired up. Get ugly. That would be U-G-L-Y. Ah, oh, yeah. I feel it inside. Oh, oh, oh. oh I feel so good to be free. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you wild creatures just been waiting for a chance. This is it. He's my beloved. 
time, don't you want to? Hey, 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 hey. Ah, ah, hallelujah. Yay! Don't you be ashamed the morning after the night before. Ah, don't you be ashamed of what you did here. Don't you be ashamed. He wants this kind of loving. That's what he wants. He don't want no sterile, too pretty to touch. Hey, that's not how conception takes place, baby. You hear what I said? You got to lose some control. You're going to have to lose some. The reason why you're so nervous is because you won't shut your eyes. You're all worried. I'm telling you. You know, as long as you love him from a distance, he cannot get close enough to you to change you. Did you hear what I said? As long as you love him from a distance, you're just dating. No, you're not even dating. You're just watching. Dating is when you come to the house. You like the candy and the flowers. That's dating. He comes a little closer, you play hard to get. See, the men in here understand this. <clears throat> they know how to speak poetry. It just depends on their pursuit. When they are in that courting mood, they know exactly how to Romeo. They have a goal in mind. That's why we have candy and flowers. But the beauty of this thing is, and I want the brothers to hear me here. When God gave us parallels in his word, and most of us run from this kind of passion because it's embarrassing, first of all. And it's not made for public display. And it feels like exhibitionism. The reason why God is raising women is because we are models for what he wants to claim. Now, let me explain something to you. I'm going to give this to you in a nutshell, then I'm going to break it down and cook with it. In the beginning, God gave us a perfect example of intimacy and oneness. One man, one God. The man was vulnerable without being vulnerable. He was naked, but there was no shame because he had nothing to be afraid of. Naked means exposure, but in the presence of God, nakedness becomes illumination. He doesn't yank off your cover-ups. He invites you to relax and let them slip because he's not ashamed of what's underneath. Ah, most of us are. That's why we dress. <laughs> hey, we compensate for what isn't or is there. <laughs> yeah. And just let you wonder. Hey. And then he said, completion. See, there were two. There was God and the man. That kind of intimacy didn't frighten them then. It shouldn't frighten you now. God gave to him. He received. He didn't have a problem with that. It did not change his species.
because he allowed himself to hear a voice and respond to it. It is only in our hour when identity between men and women is muddled. And of course it would be a satanic plot because God intends to come back for a feminine counterpart. Now that frightens the brothers when they hear that because they say, oh my God, women are gonna get out of their place. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We were supposed to be a role model for what is to come. It's not an issue of sexuality. It is an issue of submission, and it always has been. And women learn their submission from the way they watch men. Did you hear me? If a man will not submit to authority, his wife has trouble submitting to him. He has never shown her how it's done. Oh, y'all wish we'd strike up the band again. I can feel it. My God, start the music. <laughs> See? And what would happen if God would treat all men the way they treat their wives? See, that is exactly the model he's using. Because he did not say, I'm coming back for a him. That would be perverse. Did you hear what I said? And you say, well, how can male and female, how can we create a she? Oh, go back to the garden, sweetheart. How did a she come from a him? And I'm a she, and I'm a coming from him, and I'm a going to him very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to invite you to do something because I believe it's important that people associate their bodies with what they're about ready to receive. Jesus always spoke from a mountain and people sat at his feet. And I'm going to invite those of you that are comfortable to fill the floor. If you have a Bible, you might want to go get it. Fill the front. Why? Because you're getting ready to hear something of great importance. It's appropriate that you should be in a posture of submission. Did you hear what I said? This is why it is so important that there is love in the body of Jesus Christ. Because love reveres the other. If there were love in marriages, a husband would be eager to lay his life down for his wife and she would be eager to call him Lord. Somebody's got to start. And I want to say something to you that is yet harder still, but I'm going to say it anyway because I love you. I've danced with you. I've sweated with you. My God, have I sweated with you. <laughs> Jesus. I've torn my hair up. And it just feels so good. I just get so sick of that little tight bun. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to put a ponytail right on the top of my head and run a coat hanger through it <laughs> and stick it straight up. I just want to be a lightning rod for God. <laughs> Hit me! <laughs> Think that'd go over a general conference. <laughs> I'd have to smear some shaving cream and mayonnaise in there to make it hold. But I have never yet put an oatmeal box in my hair, though. I've heard of women that did. And silk and unmentionables. It's terrible when you dance and shout. But you've always got a handy change. And I want nobody to get sassy with me because I heard y'all know how to make change in this church. Here it's a new regulation if you want to be in the choir. First question is, can you make change? <laughs> Whoop, right there. Two dimes and a nickel. Oh, that's an inside joke. Very inside, trust me. <laughs> oh, see, I'm born for the right time. In my mind, out my mouth.
This is what John was trying to tell us when he said, if you love God, which is a vertical relationship from here to here, then you will love your brother. And God put every human being on the same plane. He said, y'all are all horizontal. Which is why I have given up making commentaries on other people. I have given it up. I'm very happy. I'm sowing into my own future. I figure if it doesn't go out my mouth, it won't spring up in my garden. So I don't care what you look like, baby. And it don't make any difference to me what religion you are. We on the same horizontal plane. Jesus said my only responsibility to mankind was to love them. Oh, I love that. I love it. Now, I pack an Uzi and wear army boots. But I don't fight people. I battle spirits. I don't fight people. I love people. I love them. I is one. <laughs> when you have a horizontal, when you have a vertical relationship with God, or let's just say if you're horizontal, I can tell how much of this you have, but what, by what kind of that you have. Did you hear me? Married couples who have no intimacy, and I do not mean sexuality, and churches where people come and are not known of one another, I know have never had this. Because when you get in that passion, it impassions you so that you have to do what Moses did. You have to restrain yourself. And the only thing you cover is not your faults, but your face. Why would you cover your face? Because you see so clearly and shine so brightly that you don't want to hurt anybody's eyes with all that light coming from you. <laughs> That's what I want to be when I grow up. I just want to be that little bunny, that little pink one that's ever ready. I can't believe I just said I wanted to be a rabbit. <laughs> I never said I wanted to breed like one, hello. <laughs> just thought you might want to know that I do know you're sitting there watching me. And I came to tell you and I said, oh Jesus, I'm all shook up. I see it, how am I gonna say it? How am I gonna take this crowd to the cleft? See, and he had to break you down a little bit. He had to tear you up a little bit, make you ready for a climb. And my throat's no good, so anything you get here tonight's gonna be God, it won't be me. But I'm gonna have to take you there, because this is what he told me. I was struck mute at such words. So I'm gonna have to ask you to do something because I revere so much what God has given me. The part of me doesn't want to tell it to you because I'm afraid you'll throw it down on hard ground. So I have to leave my fear and remember that he had enough faith in me to let me see it. I got to have enough faith in you to let you have it. But this is my greatest treasure. You be careful how you take this. Be careful. Close your eyes and put your hand on your heart. Oh, Lord Jesus, I've come down from my illumination, down to the 70 who ate and drank and saw you like a sapphire stone. I plead with you that you will let none of the words that you carved into the tablet of my heart. Let me not misspeak one. And oh, let these whom you have called partake of what you gave me in the cleft. I fear and tremble lest I should not make it clear enough. 
lest my voice be so weak or my example so poor that these should think that what impassions me is my own gift. I have been impassioned by the consuming fire at the top of the mountain, and I only want to bring into these you have called. Not one of these is here by accident. Repeat after me, beloved. Lord, let your word strike my heart with fire. Let me tremble at the knowledge. Let me feel the consummation. With your eyes closed, put your hand on your head. Oh, holy God. Repeat after me. Oh, holy God, let your word transform my thoughts and change my thinking so that I may serve you in mind and heart. Amen. In the book of Daniel, it is written, the people who know their God in the hour of great covenant breaking shall stand firm, be strong, and do exploits. Now look me in the face, beloved, for I've come to tell you a truth and not to hurt your feelings. For God called you to do these things. But what you want to do and what you see cannot be done by you going for it. In other words, yes, the world is dark and in need of light. Yes, there is sickness that needs healing. Yes, there is oppression that demands deliverance. Yes, everywhere there is need but you can't meet the need by serving it. And this is the paradox. Before you can ever stand firm, which was first, be strong, which was second, and do exploits, which was third, you must know him. And so the people who have built relationship with God. And you know what? Relationship takes time. And we are in a world that demands more of us, which is one of the greatest diabolical plots because we have no time to build relationship. Listen, it is possible to come to church to sit on a pew and have no relationship with your own family. I tell you these things because I came from the wilderness where I have been with the shepherd. I don't serve the gift anymore. I serve the giver. If Jesus would have served needs, he would have healed everyone. But he didn't. And so they weren't. The world would say, if you have that kind of gift, go to every hospital, and they would demand the kind of sacrifice that the children of Israel tried to give to the god Molech, who was all metal, inflexible, unfeeling. It didn't matter how many babies they cast into him because he was without feeling. You cannot serve people's needs. You have to serve God because for every need you meet, there are three million more. Do you hear me? Men whom I love, you represent the side of God to me that I saw in my father first and in my groom 
for it was the relationship with my father that prepared me for my husband. Do you understand where I'm taking you? Only in this hour has the revelation of what it is to be a bride come to this church. And the reason is, the book of Revelation speaks of the bride, the wedding supper of the lamb once. The Old Testament is filled with references so that you know that the word I speak is true and not my own. I will read to you from the book of Isaiah first, and then I will take you to Hosea, where the Lord spoke to me and shut my mouth and made me fear and tremble because there are men in the house and I revere men. It is men who have taught me to be a warrior princess. It is the strength of a man that has taught me to discern the seduction of a man because men understand the weaknesses of women. So it is a man who has taught me how to fight against the seduction. There is money to be made in the weakness of women and men make money because they are providers. So they are the voice behind fashion and beauty and all of the things that prey on women. Do you understand me? It is men who understand the weakness of women who prey on them, but it is godly men who understand that same weakness who empower their women to resist it. Are you hearing me? And know that the reason I am telling you these things is because God is not coming for children. A man may have many children. He has one wife. God is calling us into an intimacy where the submission that women model, godly women, is modeled again through the men that they are submitted to. You submit to God in humility. When my brother man comes in the house of the Lord and he cannot submit, then you prevent my submission to you because I watch your example. And so God has called men and women alike, men to serve as protectors, providers, sources. You represent God on the earth. This is going to be hard for you. You're going to argue with me. Remember the scripture said, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ, who thought it not robbery to be what? Please say that again to me. With whom? How could this be? Because God raised him up. It is time for him to raise us up. If you are proud, you'll be abased. I don't have to worry about the pride or the proud among us. They'll never be raised up. But those of us that have been humbled for a long time, serving in submission, he has to exalt because darkness is on the earth and Isaiah must be fulfilled that said, rise and shine. Are you with me? So that you know I don't lie to you, you go to Isaiah 54. All throughout the word of the Lord, he spoke of Israel. First in Ezekiel, he said, you were a cast off. I saw you as a baby, an infant. Are you listening to me? He said you were in your blood. He described the afterbirth, the umbilical cord, and he said you were not cut, nor washed, nor salted. I came by when you were in your blood, meaning the afterbirth was still there, and said live. And to this outcast infant Israel baby, God gave life, and then he said, I wrapped you up, and I clothed you, and waited for you to mature so that I could come to you and fill you with seed. Did you hear what I said? Willful people cannot be consummated. Did you hear what I said? 
Willful people cannot be consummated, and therein is the difference in relationship. If your argument with God is over inheritance and what you're going to get on the other side, then I'm going to tell you your relationship to him is son. Because all sons fight over inheritance. I got sick of the fight, and I said, there's got to be more. I don't care about your gifts. I don't care even about the callings. I love you. Let me step in the fire. Consume me. It is the measure of love that determines whether you are a child or a wife. What? I don't love him like a son. I don't love him like a daughter. Isaiah 54, 5. Four, read four. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed, neither be confounded and depressed. For you shall not be put to shame. You shall forget the shame of your youth, and you shall not seriously remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore, meaning there is no husband in your life. This is to men as well. If the men struggle with this, you know it would grieve you if you could not provide for your wife. You want to be the one that tells her how beautiful she is. You want her to long to hear your voice, to come to you for what she needs, to give thanksgiving for provision to you, not another man. This is what God wants from us. Not the seeking of another source when I am in trouble. Not relying on my own. Oh, don't touch me. A man doesn't know what to do with a woman who says, don't touch me. And we must as men and women Resist the urge not to merge. To bear yourself in the presence of something greater and holier. Why? Five. For your maker is your husband. It doesn't get any more intimate. The Lord of hosts is his name and the Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. Now go to Hosea. I told you about Daniel. I told you about Revelation. I read to you Isaiah. Now understand what God has sent me to tell you. Hosea the fifth, excuse me, the second chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. I have a lengthy reading, 14 through 23. It is time to arise, my love, and come away. And that is the title of this. And I know what time it is. You have time to listen. You must. I won't repeat it again. You must have time to hear this. Therefore, behold, I will allure her. Israel, meaning men and women. Why? Because men and women complement each other. Strength and tenderness. Protection and nurturing. Two parts of one complete whole, both needing the other, both necessary to the other, for a man has as much need to give to a woman as she does to receive. And the combination produces life. Did you hear me? What happens then when God of all creation comes to a people who understand the concept of intimacy and nearness and not distance? It means conception. It means development. It means maturity. It means leaving the concept of, well, how come she gets to and I don't? And how come every time I hear it, I put my hands over my ears. The children are fighting again, I say, beloved. They're fighting amongst themselves, and I'm tired of it. Would you tend to it? I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter, and it's not my job to whip the kids. Their daddy's going to take care of them. I will allure her and bring her, men and women, everybody say both. If men and women could become one, the church would become one. Did you hear what I said? That's why marriage seminars are not a waste of time. If sisters could become one, what do you mean, Sister Shostrand? I'm talking about the same passionate love for the same husband. I'm talking about men who love as intensely as to God as their wives love them. Do you understand me? Are your hearts so hard you're concerned about gender? Cut the foreskin, brother. Cut it. 
circumcise your heart. That hurts, but it makes you more sensitive. Did you hear what I said? Yes, I hope every word I'm saying shocks you to your toenails because God wants an intimate relationship with you and we cannot afford to be a sterile church. God wants to birth the miraculous in us, but you can't do it if you won't let him overshadow you. I don't care what your degree is. My God, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are. Isaiah was a prince, and he said, I fell on my face and cried, whoa, I was in the presence of the holy. How long has it been since you felt that kind of consummation and shook like a leaf and were bare naked in the presence of holy God and let him see all of you? I have to take you slowly because I'm taking you in one night where he has taken a long time to take me. And I wouldn't even be here except by divine appointment. I wouldn't tell you these things. It's too private. You have no right. And he said, go, there are more like you. It's not going to be those of us who will fly under the same flag. It's going to be those of us who love with the same intensity. You are my family if you love that way. I have no right to tell you what to do and how to behave. You are spouses to another husband. I am married and so must you be. For this people's heart is hard and they wrestle with this understanding for they do not know. And yet he chose you. I could have gone to a thousand churches. I came to you. Cut your heart and let it bleed. You need. You are the most favored people in Pensacola tonight because I am here with illumination for your mind and soul. God wants to conceive in you tonight. You don't believe me. There are men in this house tonight assigned for the cleft. The great provider wants to provide you something, my brother. Ah. I will bring her into the wilderness and I will speak tenderly unto her heart. There I will give her her vineyards and make the valley of Achor troubling to be a door of hope and expectation and she shall sing there and respond as in the days of her youth and as at the time when she came up out of the land of Egypt and it shall be in that day that you make the trek to the wilderness says the Lord that you shall call me Ishi, my husband, not father. There are thousands and millions that call him father. He's looking for somebody to call him husband. Do you want to go up? Are you content to stay where you are? Take your shoes off your feet. You're on holy ground. You can't go wearing your own ability. Brother man, if you're talking and showing me your biceps and your strength, I worship your strength. It is your strength that's made me a strong woman. I am yoked to a strong man. What you see is not me, but the man in me. I lived with him for 21 years and he has sown me with power I did not have. He told me, go woman, I free you. Be, say, tell, show. The trip I'm going to take you on is not for the faint-hearted. And again, I say, if you're going with me, if you're going up, take your shoes off. I'm not playing with you. I mean, literally, take your shoes off. With the shoe off his foot, Boaz bought a field and a wife. You think you're going to get anything more by doing any less? I will take the names. You won't call me Baali anymore, meaning Lord. I don't want you down on the floor worshiping at my feet. He said, I want to take you in my arms. I don't want your hero worshiping me, woman. I don't want you putting me up on a pedestal and giving me your flowers and your incense and your offerings. I want to take you into the inner sanctum and tell you my heart. I want to know you. And Adam knew his wife and she conceived. 
and the people that know their God. Don't tell me you're not emotional, brother. Every book of the Bible that I can read was written by a man. It was a man who penned, you shall call me Ishe. And I, a weak woman, read, and fire struck my soul, for I have that relationship with my Ishe here because I have it this way. I reveal the man in the flesh and call him Lord and love him. And what he says is my command. It is my greatest wish. For the man brought me to where I am, my Ishe on earth, and I am his Sarai, his Sarah. How in the name of God are we going to do the works of God when we don't even have relationship with one another? Mm. Say, help me. Hit your chest and say, help me. My God, I wish we had prayer shawls all over this. Your head should be covered right now. I guess you thought you were playing and dancing. And I know what you, you didn't know who was watching. I'll take the names of the Balaam, the Baalam, the Lord, Lord this, Jehovah this. No, how could you do that? We know you by name. You're Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah. I don't want to be your Jehovah. I want to be Ishe. Lord of my life. But I don't let you share my life because you're Lord. Mm. Somebody's going to call him Ishi. Somebody's going to call him Ishi. And in that day will I make a covenant for Israel with the living creatures of the open country and the birds of heaven and the creeping things of the ground, all the props of the wilderness. I have much to say to you. I pray you can bear it. I'll break the bow and the sword. Not going to be any more conflict among my people. Oh. I don't fight anybody. I am with Ishi in the wilderness. He has broken my sword. I'm not afraid of anybody anymore. <laughs> Not what you think, not what you might do to me, because I am married to Ishi, and he is my provider. You are not. He may send you like he sent a raven, but he will feed me with his fingers, and from his mouth he will satisfy me. If I need love, I don't have to go to you. I cry to Ishi, and he comes to me in the night and lays himself over me and loves me in his language. Who will go with me to the wilderness? Who? Arise. Arise, my beloved. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me. I will betroth you in stability and faithfulness. My God, this is what every pastor has ever prayed for for his saints. Make them stable, make them faithful. And you shall know, and you shall know the Lord. And in the day that you know me, I will respond to the heavens which ask for rain to pour on the earth. God sees the need of the earth, but he cannot respond till somebody goes to the wilderness, gets a vineyard, till somebody sits in the valley of trouble with hope and expectation, till somebody begins to sing in the desert to Ishe Then he said, I will speak to the heavens which cry for rain on the earth and they'll respond to the earth which begs for the rain and the earth shall respond to the grain and the wine and the oil which beseech it to bring them forth and these shall respond to Jezreel 
restored Israel. My bride will I finally produce for myself out of every kindred, every tribe, the people in Pensacola, a woman, a man and woman together who will make the trek to the wilderness and lay aside all their play pretties, lay aside their strength, lay aside their abilities and call me Ishe. He said, I'll respond to the earth through the voice of my wife. Oh God, send us revival, send us revival. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You have never shook in the sovereign presence, but you're praying that he'll drive out demons through your hands. How can he do through you what you've never let him do to you? I cannot understand people who will say pray for so-and-so's deliverance when they themselves are so bound they're terrified to dance in public. How can you ask for such transformation when you yourself have never been transformed? Where are those that call him Isha, my God? It's so at unrest before. Where are you, Lord? I want, I'm gonna send a wild woman after the spirit of John and Elijah to speak into existence. The people who will call me Ishe. You're gonna have to leave the man-made. Now look me now. I am not against programs. I am not against traumas. They bring people to God, but there is more. Oh, for the people that will plug into the power that stops the program in the middle, that stops it. For the people that are not afraid of the fire. What would happen? Huh. Oh, say, Sister Jo Strand, we'll only do this if you're here and if we have permission at women's conference. And, you know, the men may or may not because you're a woman preacher and, you know, or you're a woman exhorter or a testifier, whatever it is you are. And when you leave, we're going to go right back to our refuge. As long as we're associated with a big church, got a big thing going on, we feel safe and that's enough. Then I submit to you. You have just assigned yourself a position as child. I want to be a bride, whether I'm in a big house or a little one. Give me a tent, Abraham. I will go where you go. I want to call you Ishe. I'll leave the man made. I'll run the risk of throwing the notes away. I'll run the risk of being weak, of being wild. Why do you suppose I am like I am? Don't you wish you could see what I see? Don't you wish you could have been where I was when it leaned down on me and I lay in the floor in the dark, sobbing satorasha, speaking to him as he spoke in my ear. I came from the wilderness. I'm gritty, baby. I live with the birds and the sand. I live with the rocks. He's taught me how to climb rocks long before they ever did that toe thing. I don't need a rope. I've been pressing my way to the voice at the top. Ah, yes, This is not a function of my personality. This is a function of my consummation. I am full. <sighs> oh, you feel separated. You come to church. <laughs> oh, you're wearing me out because I feel you pulling against me. Oh, he's going to fall on everybody here. He said the only prerequisite <laughs> is that your flesh. It's never gonna be enough for me to be in a program. My God, I've lived where there are no programs. He cut me off from all work. He took the yoke off my neck and said, you're not gonna do nothing. And I screamed into the carpet, why did you burst me then if you won't let me build? I wanna build a tower. I wanna build it. I wanna make a name for myself. And he said, I birthed you so you would 
know me. What? Know you? I just want you to know me. And he wooed me. He won me with love. He won me. He never was critical of me. I can't say that of all the children in the house. He won me with love. Oh, he became a suitor. I became pursued. He was the pursuer. He reached down and healed all that stuff from the past, knowing full well that when he did, he'd make a believer out of me. And when he put the capstone touch of healing on my life, I was his finally. I said, do with me what you want. I like this feeling. And he won me, and then he wooed me further. He said, I've got to cut off the influence of people on your life because you keep looking to them to tell you you're all right. You keep looking to them to tell you I love you. You keep looking to them for how you dress, how you look, how you walk, how you act. You're serving them and you're not serving me. He said, come to me. I'm the only one who loves you. When you're ugly, when you're nasty, when you're sinful, I read that thought and I loved you anyway. I saw you when you were bad and I loved you when you were bad. You know, I don't have to worry about being honest with God. It's people I have to worry. You can't take it when I'm naked. But he loves it. He loves it. He loves it. I can tell him anything. He said, you're going to have to make a choice. If you're coming after me, you're going to have to leave all that. Oh, but God, they won't like me. No. <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> and I began to withdraw from all those people making all those demands and all those looks of approval and all those looks of disapproval. And he said, come to me. And I said, you know, I'm so tired of fighting it. I'm coming to you, is she? And it won me with love. Oh! And he said, the reason why you're so impoverished, woman, is you have no vineyard and everybody else has got their own thing growing. Ah, because you don't have any power, I'm going to give you some. Because you don't have any strength, I'm going to give you some. You've been working all your life to get where you got. I feel sorry for you. Because you did it by your own hand. You'll never leave what you worked all your life for. My God, unless Ishi can cut the cord and draw you into the desert. Come with me. Come with me into the wilderness where there's nothing but the sky for your roof and there's nothing but the songbird. There are no car phones there and you won't find a beeper. There are no daytimers where I live. My time is his time. Daytime or nighttime. Anytime I belong to Ishe. Ah. Ah, oh, but I don't like the lack of control, then you can't go. You can't go. And he's pressing down on this congregation. I feel his heaviness. I feel his weight. He wants to know you. He's getting closer. If you don't intend to go, you keep your shoes on your feet. If you don't want to go, don't put your shoes off because he's coming. He's coming. He's wooing you with love because he loves you. It don't matter what you've done, what you look like, act like, sound like. He knows you through and through, brother, man, sister, girl. Hallelujah. And he said, I'm going to give you a vineyard. You've been so stinking poor all your life. Never felt blessed. I'm going to plan in the wilderness. Everybody's going to want to know where'd you get that wine? Huh? Whoa, I've been crushing grapes in my own vineyard. I've been dancing in the vineyard he gave me. I got my own. I don't got to steal from you. See, I'm still going to be a happy woman when I leave you. Because you didn't make me happy to begin with. I've been with this shit. I'm in love. I'm in love. <laughs> I'm in love. I ain't a child no more. He said, I'm looking for a mature woman. I'm looking for somebody who knows how to listen when I'm speaking. Who knows how to anticipate what I want. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Dim the lights. Dim them. Dim them. Now. No wonder we're sterile. <laughs> but you're barren no more, baby. You're barren no more. You have a date with Ishi. There are men in this house who are men of power. Hallelujah. But you're like Moses. Pharaoh got to you. See what I'm saying? You've been raised by his daughter. 
I'm telling you, the world system is another wife. You understand me? She's a harlot. God referred to that system as a whore. It was one who exchanged virtue for goods, for price. And the world runs by money. And brother man, if money's your game, baby, you got to lay down your coin. Run to the wilderness. God's going to make you a staff, a power, a rod in his hand to do the miraculous. He wants to lift you up to a place you've never been before, brother man. Can you submit like a woman? You want to a woman, to, can you submit like she does? <laughs> can you let tears stream down your cheeks? Take your glasses off your face, prostrate yourself in the floor and say, Here I am. Ah, ah, I'm not creating nothing for you. I'm the voice coming from the wilderness. He drew me with love. I left the cities, the man-made, threw away the notes, stopped memorizing stuff, little scripts, you know what I'm saying? I said, uh, ooh, he's doing something to me that's real. I can't make this up. I can't fake this stuff. I, I couldn't memorize it anyway. Oh, oh. I said, and he said, come closer. He gave me a vineyard and I felt it in me. I used to tell my mom and daddy five, six years ago, something's happening to me, mama. My mother looked at me strange. See, she's gonna have to take that trip on her own. She may be mama in the body, but you know what? I'm gonna have to teach her how to be a bride. I'm gonna have to teach my mama how to be a bride. Did you hear me? I come here to teach you how to be one. Arosatona. You say, why do you have the right? Because I left the city, went into the wilderness. Where have I been all your life? I've been on the backside of the desert taking a teaching. The vineyard, the sweet wine. People say, where'd you get that? Uh, whose church did you go to? Who are your friends? I've been in the wilderness with you, she. I've been in the wilderness. I've been in the wilderness. I have something real. I didn't buy it. I didn't hear it. I went to the source. He gave me my own. And then, and then, he put me in a valley. Acor. Oh. How appropriate it starts with ache. Oh. For three years, three years, I've been in the valley. He touched my baby girl, Janice. Yes, is she? I must touch what you love with my finger because I must make you want to hope. I must make you know what it means to expect. So I'm going to touch what you love most. My daughter, my husband, then me. He crippled me like a shepherd does a lamb. In the valley of Acor, I've sat here for and he told me, I'm not going to leave you here. Lie down. <sighs> Where are you, is she? <laughs> you brought me out here. There are no books on this. <laughs> I left my tape recorder. <sighs> he told me, Cut yourself off from the outside world. Don't listen to their voices. Don't read their news. I have to talk to you. Yes, is she? And suddenly when he made me still, I cannot travel. We can go no further than this valley. He leaned down and whispered, Yes, is she? I will hope in the Lord. He is mighty. And in the night, he gave me a song. He is holy. Why are you singing, Sister Jan? Is your baby healed? No. <laughs> 
Has your husband healed? No. Are you healed? I am waiting on his He brought me out from under Pharaoh's hair. I will serve him even though I don't understand. He is a she. And when I sang, he came, he came in the night in a cloak of blackness. And I said, I can't see. What is this awful darkness over me? And I felt his breath. And he said, I have covered you with my wing. And the price of the wing is your eyes. I'm so close to you and you to me, you can't see anymore. And he lifted me up and carried me away. And he's looking for others like me who will leave your dwelling place and come with me. I go to see a she. Come with me. He cannot come for sons. And he cannot come for daughters. He's looking for the beloved of the Song of Solomon. Arise, my love, and come away with me. And you won't get it by Bible study. You have to get it in the dark. You have to get it in the night. You have to get it in the experience of it. I know you want to reason with me right now. And you want to tell me I've done some hypnosis, psycho babble mess over you. I am only speaking what I heard in the dark in the wilderness. And somebody's going to leave their rationale behind. The world of the man-made where everything's explainable. The world of the man-made where everything is either this or that. The world of the man-made where this is the way we do business. Are you ready for the trip of your life? Do you want him to take the valley you've been in? A song? He's coming for a woman who is submitted. That's why when men must submit. I submit my emotions to his reason. You must submit your reason to his emotions. Cut those lights out in the back right there. There are people in the back that think because of their distance, you're safe. I got news for you. If she's in the back row too. And the way you get to him is through the strength of your love. If all you're interested in is who gets to hold the mic next. If all you're interested in is who's going to count the money. If all you're interested in is who gets the lead role in acts. If all you care about is how you wear your hair. If all you want is the Roth IRA. If all you're interested in is your pension. Then you don't have a vineyard. And you're not going to hear the voice when the last trump says and we make our way in white, bare feet with nothing. For we came into the world with nothing, and we're going to leave with nothing. I've left it all anyway. It don't matter to me what I have or what I don't, because there's a sound from the wilderness calling the virgins, and one of them is going to be his bride, and that intends to be me. I'm going to be that one. Now, what are you waiting for? All over the building, you've already heard what I said. There's a wilderness experience for everybody here. There are men who've been wrestling. Then why don't you just go ahead and wrestle till dawn with the capital A angel. There are some people that need to get in the presence Isaiah saw. What do you think John was doing on the Isle of Patmos while he was healing burned body to the bone? Did you think it was a picnic? My God Almighty, he was in the presence of Ishe. And he saw all of us locked together in love. And he said, I see her. I see her. Every tribe, every kindred, she is submitted to his will, his way. He can lay himself on her and she'll receive his seed because she's submitted. She has her own vineyard. She's not in competition. She knows how to sing in the valley because she's left the city. My God, it won't happen until Jezreel. Don't even ask for the earth yet. You better ask for Ishi. And when God gets his bride, 
which is happening even now. Hallelujah. There are those of you that have run to the will. I shy, shy, shy. I am the Lord that calleth thee. Oh, do not despise my word. Do not despise my messenger. I am the Lord, and I have drawn you to me in greater passion. I know you. I formed you. I watched your bones in the belly of your mother before you looked human. I laid my hand on you and made you mine. And I have come to claim what you are. Come to me and sing to me. I will make your valley of trouble a door of hope and you shall rise from prostration and you shall rise. I have decreed it. You shall be the head and not the tail. But you will not do it by your own efforts and you will not do it in the city man-made. You'll do it in the wilderness where I make covenant with the birds and the beasts and I will break your sword. You have no need to fight one another for I will wed you all to me. Come to me. I am he. I am the bridegroom. Come to me. Oh my God, Jesus, what more do you need? My God Almighty, is there a man of passion who can prostrate himself, understanding what he's been called to? Good God, where are the leaders? Oh, if you cannot submit, how can those who follow you submit? It's so easy for women to submit. We're weak anyway. Cut these lights off here.
I want to sow you full of me. Call me Ishi. I want to grow in you. I am you and you. To those of you who have made the wilderness track, there is no going back. You will not forget what has happened here. And while you are under his influence, He has been filling and swirling through you, removing things that blind you, healing soul diseases, sowing you with the miracles you will perform. But first, you must know Because I have a husband, I understand. It is my responsibility to make him aware of needs. I never ask for what I don't need. And I always receive what he gives with thanksgiving. If I don't have it, I don't need it. And I don't ask others. In the holiness of this moment, oh my brothers, how I love you. It was you who taught me love is not abusive. I cannot thank you enough. It was you who taught me to stand up tall. If you would ask him right now, for what you know you need in your life and in the lives of your wife and children. He would give it to you right now. You see, things in him are not accomplished by your effort. They are accomplished by your relationship. You don't even have to come up here and ask us to pray. There is no distance between you and the beloved. Simply ask. Shaya Sahaya. Miyano. Neha. as is befitting a bride. The Holy Ghost says, before you ask for anything, give thanks for what you already have. For you were chosen for the trek to the wilderness. You are highly favored to hear such things. Have you not heard, did you not know, that the streams would come from the wilderness and the highway in the wilderness. 
and she who fled from the wrath of the dragon would run to the wilderness. We were birthed in the wilderness. We belong here. And just as your father or your mother prepared you for the man or wife you would wed, I have brought you as far as I can. And now you must go the journey by yourselves, on your own, daily, responding to the voice in the wilderness. been good and great in the morning. Be back. Take this with you and love the Lord and let him love you, okay? God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.